Welcome to a CNBC Africa Captain of Industry conversation. And today we speak to the new CEO of one of Rwanda's financial institutions. It's Koshe Bank CEO, Giam Habarujira. He will be joining us to talk matters of leadership at the bank, what style he hopes to bring, and what are the expectations for 2021. Uh, thank you for making the time, sir. And uh, first of all, congratulations on uh, that appointment. Thank you for having me, Quizera. Mm. Uh, quickly to dive into uh, who you are, uh, Mr. Habarujira. Uh, you know, uh, for many uh, outside the financial sector, they, this was a surprise for them, uh, you stepping into the helm uh, at one of uh, the big financial institutions in Rwanda. Uh, who is uh, Guillaume Habarujira? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, uh, Guillaume is my name. Uh, I am Rwandese. Um, yes, it's true that it has been a, a bit of a surprise because uh, I have spent the last uh, 17, 18 years outside the country, uh, but I haven't been that much far. Yes, um, I'm a new face on the, on the market, uh, but I believe that uh, some of the colleagues on the market uh, were already acquaintances of mine. Um, but let me say that it, it also, the appointment came as a, a very good surprise for me, and uh, it was a good opportunity to come back home. Uh, well, welcome back home. Uh, I just want to dive into your history, your experience, and what you bring to the table. What do you think you're going to bring different uh, to the table? Yeah, thank you. It's a um, very um, interesting question. I, I think that I will have a lot to learn from the market. But of course, um, having evolved in a different market um, covered uh, as a part of my experience uh, where I managed a large portfolio of financial institution and sovereign um, that were scattered across Africa and some of the customers that were a little bit more in the world, uh, service uh, payment service providers. I think that I bring, um, I have that experience that overview of what is happening globally and uh, comparatively what could be our niche and our space where we could add value as uh, one of the Rwandese financial institution. Oh. So that's, um, that's what I believe uh, that will bring it to the market. But of course, not everything is applicable, um, is applicable to this market, but we are, uh, we are confident that we'll find a path of what can really service um, our customer and the Rwandese community at large, and in the end, the shareholders. Uh, uh, Guillaume, uh, I want to look at uh, Kojer Bank. Kojer Bank, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, it is the uh, fourth or fifth, you know, uh, in terms of uh, customer base in the country. And it used to be one of the bigger giants in the past. Uh, it fell, uh, right, uh, rightfully so, if I'm to mention, uh, what do you think can be done differently uh, to, to awake what some have termed a sleeping giant? Yeah, yeah thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's a very normal when you're at the top, sometimes to fall a little bit back and gather yourself and find a new strength to move forward. Now, what that means for, uh, for Koji Bank, I would say that I see a lot of positive. Um, first, we are smaller uh, compared to our, peer, uh, our peers, and um, which means that we are much more nimble and agile in implementing um, our transformation uh, strategy. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing is that it's a well-established brand on the, on the local market. Uh, everyone recognizes the name Koji Bank. So it is not that of an uphill battle. Now we have to find a process through which um, we address some of the challenges the, um, the global Rwandese communities is facing, um, and uh, especially when it comes to own balance sheet um, services like loans um, and uh, other non balance sheet uh, services that are fee uh, generating. We've got to address the fact that uh, the credit is costly. Um, that's something that will take us, both as the customers 
and the bank working in hand in hand to find a way uh, to reduce the cost of fund both for the bank and to larger extent, um, extent to, to the customers. So that will be um, uh, the number one a priority for the bank. The second priority, I believe, should be to manage our cost income ratio, make sure that we are matching the peers, uh, what they're doing even, and, or not even better. But then again, we look at our peers, not as a competitors, as a, rather as potential collaborators. Uh, uh, we, we think that the biggest challenge we are facing is poverty in the country. And we've got to find means and a product that addresses the root causes of that poverty. I think there is a, a lot of that can be done in that space. Um, and uh, yeah, that's uh, what uh, the teams here I'm focusing on, and I believe that I can um, I can add some value with my uh, experience. Uh, how, how how will you you know uh, put this in practice, especially for a very fast changing and evolving uh, financial market? How are you able? How will you be able to not only bridge that gap with some of your competitors, but actually be at par with them? Yeah, um, I I believe. Uh, I believe that it's a good thing to, to benchmark ourselves with our competitors. Uh, at the same time, I believe that uh, where we have we have to look at is uh, at ourselves, um, how we develop our products, how we process them, and how we deliver them to the to the market. I think that uh, uh, in that space there is a way to find uh, what we know we can become better at than the average, and actually put more resources. Uh, into become the, that that thing we know we can become better that, and the rest of the services, the rest of the area, we will have to be as good as anyone. Uh, but it will be more an inward journey before it start becoming an outward journey. Um, so, uh, but uh, generally, we'll be also looking uh, at how um, we um, we separate some. Uh, Non, um, non performance services that are not core to our, our banking model and to see how we can uh, provide them with um, a much more nimble environment for them to grow. I, I think that will be for the good service uh, for them, uh, for, the, for our customer and for the shareholder in the end and for ourselves as employees. Uh, I've picked up on something there you've said, uh, you know, benchmarking yourself against some of your competitors and your advantage being that being your size at the moment. That makes you more nimble, more flexible, one would assume, and maybe less bureaucracy. But in the, fi the final sector has changed so much that you're competing with telecommunication companies. You're competing with fintechs uh, that are also growing rapidly, right? They are smaller, they are more nimble, and they are more flexible. How do you keep up with those? Yeah, thank you. That's a very valid question. I uh, I believe that the space and the processes those fintechs and those uh, uh, mobile network operators are using uh, is also a space that is open to us as well as, as a bank. So I believe that um, one of the key drivers of the, the fintech growth is uh, um, is the sandboxing of the regulation where they're allowed to to try new products, um, learn from them, or play a little bit with them, and uh, fine tune them to service their communities. I think no one said that uh, <laughs> an established financial institution um, cannot use that same space. In fact, it is even encouraged. So now uh, the um, the we have a brand, we have an established name that uh, has some value, and we need to protect that. Probably that's where uh, we'll have to find a workaround solution, um, because when you are trying something new in the market, if it doesn't work out, um, then you don't want to have a negative publicity um, or negative hit on an established brand. Uh, but then again, I believe that there are ways to go around that, and one of them is a cooperation with those um, uh, fintech companies. Um, we have what they don't have. They 
have what probably will test to build and where it makes sense. Uh, we'll see how we can um, develop value-adding relationship uh, with uh, with the larger fintech community and not absolutely compete with them. I believe, again, as long as uh, we still see poverty um, around us, uh, we'll still see inefficiency then uh, an institution like uh, ours and, and many other, we still have a room to grow for everyone. Uh, for that to happen, skill sets is critical or vital uh, in this journey. And uh, one of the challenges, uh, speaking to some members of the Rwanda's Banking Association, has been that for our banks, uh, or for banks in Rwanda to compete with the bigger players in the region, uh, that's, we're looking at Kenya, Uganda, uh, and more or less Tanzania, uh, we need to up our skill sets. Uh, where in particular, in your few m months at the helm, is that a challenge that you've also noticed? Yes, uh, absolutely. I do believe that it's a challenge also. I had the opportunity to discuss also with uh, the uh, Randy's Bankers Association. Um, yes, it's a challenge. Um, now, we have a very good people here. I can say in the market that they are very good people. I believe where we have a bottleneck is... Uh, is uh, yeah, the potential of them leaving to the competitors or to some other greener <laughs> uh, pasturages when as soon as we have invested in them. Um, again, I'm still new to, to, uh, to the market. Maybe we'll need to do some uh, advocacy using a platform like the RBA, uh, but also engage with the regulator and uh, policymakers to make sure that uh, there is a conducive environment for, uh, for us to thrive as a business. I mean, reforms pro, um, pro business attitude is not only for foreign um, investors, even local investors, we have the same level playing field. So we are going to take advantage of that and make sure that uh, the, the, the current regulations and laws fit fit the purpose, at least we address that with, uh, with the relevant authorities. Uh, okay, and just before we get into your balance sheet, uh, I just want to talk about culture. Culture is uh, key to the functionality of a bank. What kind of culture do you think you come with uh, and that you will uh, enforce to shape uh, Koje Bank in the short run? Yeah. I mean, I, I would then say that um, it's a shift that is, uh, has to be particular to Kojebank only. I think uh, having covered 20 African countries and having a multiple financial institution, um, inclusive banks and insurances as my customers, I can say that, um, uh, that there is a certain orthodoxy in the way we do business, right? And uh, certainly it is a little bit the case also in, at Kojebank. Um, but then again, uh, the people at the Koji Bank are really very good. They're very capable. So uh, the culture that I wish to, to bring in is that um, ideas have to flow easily. If we are going to innovate um, people, we should encourage behaviors that allow uh, communication, sharing of information and the ideas to actually um, happen. Um, we'll have to have a hard look at ourselves and see if we have uh, some bottlenecks or some stoppages. Um, but it's also about uh, changing um, our reward system and our performance management system to make sure that it uh, encourages the kind of behavior um, that, um, that produces the innovation <laughs> we, we want. Yes, we'll have to, ch to change and I have no doubt that uh, uh, that people here are, are, um, are up to that. I'm, I'm very accessible. I'm available to work with everyone. In fact, I think that I'll, I'll be spending at least uh, once, in, once a month, um, one or two days working uh, in a different uh, department to, to give them the opportunity uh, to, to have my presence and for me also to learn from them and understand where they need the support. How would you describe your leadership style? Oh, my, <laughs> my leadership style is, uh, is uh, run first. <laughs> if you want people to run, don't send them, just go there. Um, I, I, think, uh, uh, I think people would generally follow your lead uh, if they believe that you are ready to jump in the same waters that they are. 
um, that's one of one of the um, so that's one of the approach I think that I can have. Um, and also I have to provide the room for everyone to disagree with me. So I, I don't believe that uh, uh, I'll be a leader that gives us instruction. <laughs> I'll have to um, I'll have to pitch to them, sell to them a the new idea, show them the value it is bringing and why we should do it and find, find those who will follow that. Uh, I just want to look at uh, the people you look at, and, and this is again before we get into your balance books, uh, I just want to look at the people you look at in the finance sector. Everyone has or yeah. draws their inspiration uh, from somewhere. Where do you think you draw most of your inspiration from? I think it's very obvious. I borrow my inspiration from um, the leadership of this country, um, His Excellency President Kagame. Um, having experienced what my country went through after the genocide against Tutsis in 1994, and the recovery we went through, um, I was a growing kid back then. Uh, it just feels tremendous. And uh, now that I'm back home and I see the uh, progress that has been made. Um, it was done against all odds. Uh, I believe that uh, being able to motivate um, you know, people, being able to um, to set higher goals and resolutely go um, about them, but to be able to motivate people um, the, to, to follow the same lead, I think uh, that's a, a tremendous thing. Um, <laughs> try um, to, to learn and see what I can absolutely emulate and otherwise uh, take some advice. Um, uh, uh, there is also some other business leaders um, who, um, yeah, who I think are very, uh, are very inspiring. So I've been, um, I've been a follower of, um, of Tesla, I'm not into the personality cult, uh, but I believe I've always I found it tremendous how what was done at the top leadership um, that the company of that size that find a way to invest into their marketing in a way that is uh, really become part of the DNA that they don't spend money outside the trying to to advertise themselves. I think that the value uh, the, the leadership of Tesla has created is absolutely um tremendous and that's something um, I wish I could borrow a leaf from. Uh, qu quite a very positive place to pick your inspiration from. Uh, I just now want us to talk uh, matters uh, banking and Koje Bank to be more specific. Uh, I'm here, I'm looking at your balance sheet. Uh, as end of uh, December 2020, uh, I know you were not at the helm then, but you are at the helm right now, so you should be answerable or I'll hold you uh, to account. Uh, has anything changed regarding how the bank was approaching COVID-19 situation and the lessons drawn from that and its banking model for the rest of 2021? Yes, um, thank, thank you very much. Yeah, I, I think um, the, our balance sheet was hit uh, to the same extent as everyone else was hit, uh, but hopefully uh, we, we could, with the help of the government through the BNR, we had some facilities, we had some uh, waiver um, and exemption that allowed us to um, to extend the maturities um, that would have faced the troubles um, because of the, um, the lockdown and the, the effects of COVID-19. So um, when you look at our balance sheet, I think, I think our results um, well, 30%, almost 30% less. Uh, we could generate some other income from some other area. Um, now, going forward, as we look at the gradual reopening of the country, as many people, especially those involved in day to day business, are, are vaccinated and the effect of COVID 19 being uh, mitigated along the way, um, we'll be paying a closer a closer look at what is happening uh, in those sectors that were affected the most. Um, that is um, tourism, that is um, uh, hotelry. We are talking about gastronomy, 
um, we'll be having a hard look at um, how we can uh, restructure um, those um, those assets, those loans that were maybe ex facing some issues. Um, but uh, we won't, don't want to do it alone. We believe it's a systemic uh, systemic problem. So we'll be finding a way to talk to our um, our um, uh, competitors, our peers in the market, and um, and find uh, a solution that will make uh, the market more liquid when it comes to this class asset that was uh, hit the most by uh, COVID-19. But we won't stop there. Uh, obviously, every crisis is an opportunity. Uh, there are certainly people um, uh, looking for opportunities. And I'm thinking about uh, those investors that are in the, in the market that are experiencing a uh, negative interest rate uh, that will be looking um, to that diversify and define some yields in some of the markets. Uh, so we'll have to find a way to do it, um, to propose them um, convincingly, convincingly of, um, of what, uh, what they can have a look at and, uh, and provide, a, provide a relief actually, give maturities at a rate that we, we, we can't offer um, uh, for our customers uh, while liberating some of our resources to go after those that are more in demand while providing those who are stable but yet hit uh, another um, another solution uh, to so, their loans. Uh, Guillaume, what I'm reading from you, uh, what you're saying is uh, a, a change from uh, maybe a core business model of Koja Bank to some new form of model. And I want you to explain that. And I, I want to know if that also ties into uh, your tangible fixed assets, because those dropped despite the bank remaining profitable. And you know, tangible fixed assets used to be a thing that banks look at uh, as uh, a form of security, as a form of guarantee for their continuation. No, there, 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 there is an adaptation of the business model. Uh, but uh, we, 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 we still will still be a bank, <laughs> so we'll still uh, look for and accept the deposit from um, uh, from the general public, and uh, then convert those into longer maturities or more or less shorter maturities for um, uh, for our customers. Now, um, yeah, I do believe that um, yeah, financial institutions should shouldn't. Uh, confuse itself with um, a custodian of, um, uh, of let's say, uh, unmovable assets that will, will be provided as a, as, a, um, as a collateral. So in my view, those should come as a credit, as a risk enhancement, uh, but not as a primary basis of, for, for, for granting um, a credit. So, um, we we shouldn't be in a situation where we end up owning assets that were not a part of our core bank um, core business model, uh, which is providing uh, financial services and uh, and not sitting on um, uh, on securities provided by uh, non-performing um, assets. So what we probably are going to do differently moving forward is that we will have to fund businesses to finance businesses and a project that we like first and foremost and even be able to do it even if we wouldn't have the securities of course subject to, <laughs> uh, to the regulatory approval and uh, only use a security as a credit enhancement as a as, a, as an interest uh, the enhancement and i believe that will add a tremendous value but again that's going to be a journey We'll have to find what to start it between a chicken and egg. <laughs> uh, chicken and egg. Uh, I, I like that analogy. I just want to also look at uh, your liabilities. Uh, your liabilities have hardly changed if I'm to compare 2019 and 2020. And uh, that is representative of what we see Koja Bank as, as a bank that is seen as quite conservative. Now, could we see you more radical uh, moving forward, especially with what you're trying to explain to us? We are going to um, uh, to, to ha take hard look at how we we, we process our work um, because we want to improve because we want to grow 
Um, yes, I think our, our abilities um, is going to, uh, to, uh, to change a little bit. Um, I think that it's going to be an increase if we do our job right, uh, just because more people will be uh, willing to, um, to deposit with us. Uh, we probably will be able to, um, to showcase why uh, we can acquire um, second and the third tier capital. And I think, uh, I think if we do our job right, even then our current investor and shareholders might consider actually uh, providing us uh, some more resources uh, to fund uh, the, the asset side of our balance sheet. Yes, but uh, we, we find a way to be very transparent, um, conser conservative, yes, but transparent in a way we, we show what we are doing and where we are headed and why, after all, even if it is a growth, pro <laughs> it's a growth strategy we'll be pursuing, but it makes sense um, to, to trust us with uh, your capital, with, uh, with a long-term loan and with your deposit, um, because you'll be believing on what we do on the asset side of our balance sheet. To bring you, you bring shareholders into this conversation, I have just two questions around the shareholders. Or the first being that, you know, when a, your net profits uh, declined, but still within that range, uh, of less than uh, five percent uh, uh, declining uh, between that same period of time, uh, how do you change that lack of wanting to take on risk? Not wanting to take risk is because you know what happened when you take that risk, and I add in a certain way, right? Uh, so for me, it's very clear. Uh, if we change the way we originate and the process uh, and monitor our, our loan transaction and the letter on how we, um, we organize our recovery, and I believe that the quality of recovery depends on the monitoring and on the origination process, uh, then again, I believe that that, that will be first um, a quality filter um, in up, um, upstream. Now, downstream, we'll have um, to look at what we have on our balance sheet, what we can share in the market, uh, what we can uh, shed off from our balance sheet and, um, and become uh, more athletic. So um, cleaning up our, our balance sheet and by um, uh, bringing in new uh, processes of credit origination, uh, um, you know, uh, credit processing and monitoring, uh, will increase our risk appetite because we'll, we'll develop in confidence that we understand the sectors we are, um, we are, uh, we are lending to and uh, the particular transaction that are in, into that. Thank you, Mr. Guillaume, and uh, best of luck uh, in that new role. Now, that was the CEO of Koje Bank PLC, Mr. Guillaume Habarujira, speaking to us on his leadership style expectations and uh, the future of banking in 2021 and beyond. Now, if you want to be part of this conversation, tweet us at CNBC Africa, or you could tag me directly at The Real Quizera. Have a great day.